Hey everyone and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode I am traveling back down to a past research area in the Mark Twain National Forest and I hope you guys enjoy the journey. A while to get here. I got lost and took a detour. I finally got everything unpacked. And for those of you that don't know, I'm in the Mark Twain National Forest. And in this area, the first time I came out here, I experienced Bigfoot activity and they caught us off guard. I wasn't expecting it. I already had all the stuff put up and we heard a loud wood knock, pow, right at the edge of the woods and we all looked over and it really shocked us. But it seems like none of the other guys wanted to get close to the Sasquatch. I walked right up to it. I mean, I didn't go in the woods, but I was in the yard and the Sasquatch was right there at the edge of the woods. And he did a few more knocks and he ended up breaking a tree right in front of me. I saw the tree move. I couldn't see too much of what was going on because it was too dark. But there were about two or three Sasquatch walking around the perimeter. And I've been trying to come here ever since. This guy's been pushing over trees all night long, thrashing stuff through the woods. Wood knocking, I mean solid knocks. Of course my cameras die when this stuff happens. But he is literally, I would say, about 12 yards right in front of me.
Holy Okay. Okay. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm all right. Okay. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So you're literally 10 feet in front of me, aren't you? And I've been trying to come here ever since and document that same activity for you guys, but it's been proven to be near impossible just because it seems like they know I have equipment and now I'm ready, so I don't know. It's gonna be a difficult task to achieve, but I'm out here nonetheless. It was about a two hour drive and there was a lot of traffic out just because it's a Saturday. And today it's gonna to be around 98 degrees, which is pretty hot for Missouri. And it's early June, so it's gonna get even hotter. I set up the audio recorder, the Zoom H6, inside of the cabin, and I have the cables running out through the yard into the woods, and they're plugged up into two different microphones, um, road microphones. So they're plugged up into two different dynamic road microphones, I do believe is what they are. And we can hear what's going on outside from inside the cabin, and it's gonna be awesome unlimited recording basically but yeah bill wants to sit out by the fire today listen for the sasquatch and of course i'm going to bust out the parabolic microphone the thermal device today we have something special i brought the dji drone and we're going to get some aerial shots up above and see what's going on around us the plan is to see the best spots from the air and hopefully we can video record a sasquatch from above Bill will be my visual observer, and I'll be the, re the remote PIC, the pilot in command. And I think it's going to be awesome. We'll be able to get a bunch of different video footage and put it all together into one video. So I'm excited about that. I've been waiting quite a while to get the drone license, and I'm excited I got that. It's amazing. Bill's grandkids were outside playing in the yard, screaming and yelling. So I'm hoping that builds up the curiosity with the Sasquatch and maybe they'll come in to see what the heck's going on in the area. I have another audio recorder pod that I'm gonna set up in the wood line. And in case those two microphones don't pick up anything, hopefully the other mic will. Let's see, what else are we going to do? Um, I plan on hiking a little bit, going down some new forest roads, and just walking around with the thermal device at night. I'm going to walk past the cemetery and go as far as I can without um, getting too scared. But yeah, these bugs out here are horrible. I've already sprayed myself, but they seem to be extremely relentless. Other than getting Bigfoot activity, what do you guys want to see with these videos when I make these trips? Let me know down in the comments below. <clears throat> Bill's had a new friend out here doing some research and he's got some pies and stuff set up at the edge of the yard and um, he's got a bucket hung up in the air and I think he's been gifting the Sasquatch, which is good. They haven't taken the food yet, so maybe they'll come in tonight. Oh, another thing is it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a full moon tonight, so yeah, that'll be awesome. It was pretty bright last night and I was walking around my property. There wasn't too much activity, not even wildlife activity, but I've noticed when it's a full moon, you gotta wait till like midnight or two or three in the morning, then it gets crazy. I couldn't stay up that late because I had to come here. I wanna be at every place at the same time, but that's proven to be impossible. When I get back, I'm gonna camp at the Merrimack like I told you guys. I'm gonna camp at my place some more. And then I'm gonna head back to the killing fields and I think we can make an awesome video out there. And who knows, we just gotta keep hitting it randomly. 
and that's the best I can do. Even though I don't camp all the time, I'm still walking around my property, all the way around the long driveway and the trails that I have. So, it's just a matter of time, guys. I have to be ready when it happens, and hopefully it does. All right, we have the Zoom H6 audio recorder, and we have two XLR cables plugged up into it, running into the bathroom, out the window, through the yard, and out into the woods. They're plugged up into two Rode microphones that are basically designed for nature audio recording. But yeah, we can monitor the levels from right here, and these mics require 48 volts of electricity, which is called phantom power. And from right here, we can adjust the volume to each microphone. And if we want to, we can plug up more mics or even plug up the parabolic microphone, leave it outside and listen to that as well, along with these other mics. But yeah, this is about as professional as it gets for Sasquatch researching. But yeah, I can listen to the audio from inside the cabin and I can adjust the audio levels to each microphone input and this is just really awesome I'm gonna get a sound bar mount it up and then just line out the audio into the into the sound bar I think that'd be pretty cool but yeah these headphones are awesome You guys hear that? We have the drone right here, GoPro equipment, the Olympus audio recorder inside of the pod, and yeah. Over here we have the trusty parabolic microphone, which is really cool. I'm loving this thing, guys. I wasn't trying to diss it last time. I was just trying to give, just trying to get that bad review out. So I'm standing in front of the cabin, and when I first came here, like I told you guys, we were on the other side of the cabin next to the fire and I was getting ready to leave I was like man nothing happened we didn't really find too much so I might as well pack up and go home I've already filmed the interview and right there the whole time we were standing there that's the part that bugs me is the whole time we were standing there there's a Sasquatch standing right there and the whole day we've we've been looking for them and that goes to show how well they can hide and they let us know that they were there there was a loud wood knock and we all jumped we all looked over and I, i'm gonna admit i was i felt fear because you don't know what they're gonna do none of us did and when it just kept knocking for a few minutes i decided to walk over there and interact with it and basically i was trying to talk to it I set my audio recorder up in front of it because they said I couldn't use a camera, no IR equipment anyways, and it was already dark so I didn't want to use my night vision and get kicked out on the first day. I was trying to show some respect to them because they want them around. So I was just standing at the edge of the wood line over here on this side of the cabin. The guys are over there by the house on the other side of the cabin. And this thing's wood knocking right there in front of me and it breaks a limb a few limbs and then it breaks a tree and there is this weird paranormal moment there where I wasn't sure what happened it seemed like the tree was getting ready to fall on top of me and I was looking up okay. and I could see the top of the tree okay. it looked like it was coming down on me and that's when I cussed on the audio recorder like oh crap or whatever I said but it didn't Not fall right. towards me it didn't. that was the strangest thing no tree fell we could hear it crack I saw it like it was falling, and then everything went back to normal. I always kept it to myself, but it seemed like they manipulated mat matter, time and space, or something. Something weird went on there, and I'm not sure. <clears throat> but yeah, the guys, not all the guys, but Bill 
and one of his friends have seen some orbs over there where he had his where Bill had his encounter at so my plan for right now my plan for right now is to set up this camera right here in the shade and film out in the woods and maybe we'll capture something if there is something paranormal going on maybe we'll be able to document it because that day I was looking real hard for Sasquatch and I'm pretty sure I would have seen one but I didn't and the weird thing was it was standing right here next to Bill's property the whole time so my thinking is I'll film and zoom in into the forest and maybe when I review the footage we'll capture something because I can't rely off my own senses anymore because obviously they're not good enough so we'll see what we can do guys and I'm thinking it was the second or third time I came out here I set up my hammock right there in front of where that thing came out the last time and I was just about getting ready to fall asleep like I was in that dream state the first stage of the the dream cycle and um I hear something I hear like females screaming like ah! like they're falling down a tunnel three of them over there across the ridge and I'm like what the heck my eyes just burst open and I spring up in my hammock I'm like okay that was weird what the heck and I'm thinking my audio recorder is working that's out in the woods and it's not it's not recording I'm thinking it is but the zoom recorder that I have the H1 fails so I'm sitting there confidently in my hammock thinking that everything's going well I'm documenting all of this activity because my recorders pointing right in that direction and I'm not and then I hear over here across the road by the cemetery I hear whoop, whoop. I'm like, okay, that's a that's a bullfrog. That's what that is. That's a bullfrog. And then it's like, ruh, 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 ruh. I'm like, holy crap, holy crap, that's not a bullfrog. They're here. They're here. So I get up, put on my shoes, walk over to the cabin, go in there because my buddy Steve's in there. He's already asleep. I'm like, Steve, they're here. They're going off. They sound like three females screaming their heads off and one over here is croaking and it's definitely not a dog or a bullfrog and he's like oh yeah yeah he's like they'll sound like females he's like normally the females group up and you know he started talking about it then went back to bed I'm like okay what do I do so I walk back outside it's almost midnight dark outside I'm like okay he don't want to come out so I'm gonna go back to my hammock I'm laying there and I'm hearing them go off in the holler and I'm thinking, yes, yes, I documented the activity. This is gonna be awesome. And my camera equipment at that time, I don't have lights. Um, the night vision I have is really crappy. They don't allow me to record night vision. And if I turned on the lights so the camera could see just regular LED lights, I feel like that'd give away my position and everything would stop. But um, yeah, it was really weird being outside when, when they showed up and I ended up just falling asleep. Everything was fine. I slept like a baby. But yeah, like I said, we'll set up this camera off of the deck here in the shade and film into the woods, zoom in and stop in certain areas, certain holes and gaps in the woods. And we'll see if we can get anything because like I said, I'm not gonna be able to see it anyways and maybe you guys will. And if you guys see anything, let me know down in the comments. All right, recording on both devices. I'm just panning around and not really paying too much attention to the camera. So hopefully we'll get something. show you guys here it's 
really hard to see. It's a really nice day out, but if you get out in the sun, you're going to pay for it. And Bill's grandkids were out there playing earlier. They were out there for a while. I was like, oh boy. But yeah, I'm just zooming in to gaps in the woods. And I'm trying to um, just pick up on anything. Maybe the microphone will pick up something. I've had that happen out here. Wood knocks that we didn't hear, but were picked up on the microphone. And they were clear as day, just like when the Sasquatch was out there. But we didn't hear it. That was the strange part. There could be something watching us right now. There probably is. There usually is. That's how it works, guys. What do we got there? Maybe a stump? I'm not sure. Kind of looked like a head for a second. Freaked me out. I don't know, I'll have to blow it up on the big screen later and see what it is. But yeah, you guys can see how much there's... But yeah, you guys can see how much cover there is. Sorry, I got like really tongue twisted there. I was like, do what? I feel like something would be hiding behind that brush pile there. Do you guys see anything? The more I touch the camera, the more it vibrates. Like any little touch throws it off. So you gotta be pretty smooth. Let's get a little bit higher. And I'm zoomed all the way out. All right, see that yellow marker up there? That's the Mark Twain boundary. thinking about walking down the other side of that fence and going down in, into the creek bottom down there and over there is where they're at guys just right up right down that hill on the other side there's a ridge over there full of pines it's private property but it borders the Mark Twain so I think I can get down in there possibly it's gonna be nasty though I know it's going to be nasty. So there's the cabin. There's the cables running down into the yard. And here's the new microphone setup, guys. I'm really digging this. Those are the Rode mics. I can't remember what model they are, but they are the ENTG1, if anyone is interested. But I got two of those, and I also got a Rode tripod mount for the microphones. And right now I got them tucked in 
to the shade because they were right over here but they were sitting in the direct sunlight and I wasn't digging that so I moved them over here into the shade you can still hear what's going on out there <clears throat> freaking bug flew into my mouth sorry but yeah you can still hear what's going on out there and I'll move them over here I want to put it on that stump but I don't think it'll reach it might yeah it'll reach that stump I'm gonna put it on that stump there the only problem is there's some big trees over there so bright out here you can't really see anything on the camera too much light doesn't work with the camera neither just too much darkness but yeah he's surrounded by Mark Twain and some state land just to give you guys an idea part of the yard but yeah that's where the Sasquatch was he was just right there there's the cabin there's the Sasquatch and we were um, sitting over here by the fire, or standing over there by the fire, and we heard pow, loud wood knock. Zero wind, really. I mean, the wind was kind of blowing, but it would stop. It was just a gloomy day. The clouds were out. It's kind of nasty. And it was like January or February, which goes against my research that Sasquatch are mainly out in the summer times. So hot out here guys. This heat's gonna kill the grass. You can already see some... <clears throat> okay, there's so many bugs out here. You can see some of the grass already dying. Alright, now that I've explained to you guys Kind of what's happened around the area for those that don't know and for those that do it kind of puts it in perspective a little better but yeah i'm going to set up once again another audio recorder out in the brush over there by that mark twain national forest boundary marker um that's the farthest point away from the house and with the ac units going off the grandkids being around I think it'll be better to put it over there Bill did say he heard vocalization down that way that's where he heard the yell how or whatever they heard I wasn't around so I'm not really sure but yeah instead of using the set timer where it just turns on on its own I'm just gonna hit record let it roll the whole time because I've missed a lot of stuff with the set timer just because it happens during the middle of the day or in the morning time so I'm gonna let it roll tomorrow I'll change the battery in the recorder and we'll keep the research moving it's gonna be a lot of audio to go through and I have so many things to do so who knows if we don't experience any activity at all I may not even check it but if we get something, anything, that leads me to believe they were around, yeah, we're going to analyze the whole thing, and that's just how it works. But yeah, let's hang this sucker up and get to work. Yep, this looks like a pretty good spot. There's a good gap between my other recorder and microphones, so just in case those don't pick up anything, this recorder should that's the plan anyways my friends what do you guys think about the outdoor gear review guy going out looking for bigfoot it's pretty cool right it's cool to see more people opening up to the subject and i feel like he's trying to warm people up to it like he believes a little bit more than what he says he just doesn't want to sound like an idiot possibly but it's crazy how many views he gets just setting up with a trail camera and walking around the trails but he does great work. He makes good videos, so he's already had a big following, which is really cool. I'd like to meet up with him one day, maybe camp, bring him out here and camp. I guarantee you we'd experience some activity for sure. So if you're watching this and if you want to come out, we'd love to have you out, man. So yeah, we're going to get this thing set up, like I said. Let's turn it on. 
make sure it's working everything's functioning as it should let's hope right that doesn't always seem to be the case the only time this stuff doesn't work is when the Sasquatch come out. Hey, and there could be something too that people say that they disrupt electronics and it could be very possible, but it could be pure coincidence as well. All right, so there's the recorder. We hit record, it's recording. We fasten on the windscreen. Make sure it's still recording. And then we want to be real gentle when we slide it into the tube so we don't turn it off or push another button. You just really got to like check to make sure because that's happened as well. There's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're doing Bigfoot research. It sounds easy, you know, why didn't you pull out your camera? But it's not so easy. All right. Even when it's in the tube. You want to make sure it's still recording, okay? It sucks knowing that you drove two hours sometimes and you didn't get anything. Especially when you know the Sasquatch were out. That's like missing a giant buck. That gut feeling that you have for like two weeks, that's what it's like, not capturing Bigfoot activity. Let's go guys. All right, that should be a pretty good spot for the audio recorder. If they go off, we'll catch them. And um, yeah, that's the best we can do. I'm gonna get out there and explore. Like I said, go down that Mark Twain boundary into the creek bottom and close to the pines. We'll see what it's like. Um, I'm not from this area of Missouri. I hear there's a lot of timber rattlers and different types of rattlesnakes. So. We'll have to keep an eye out for them and the copperheads. Try not to get a bunch of ticks on us and avoid all the spider webs if possible. I'm not too allergic to poison ivy, so should be all right. Let's try it out. Alright, it's probably the hottest part of the day, but I want to fly my drone later, and it's going to be the best time to fly later. That way we can get the best footage, rather than walk later when it's cooler and miss getting that, that best shot. But those kids are going crazy, so maybe there's a Sasquatch in here. Like I said, the crows were going off. All right, we're on the other side of the fence now. Cool. Hey, 
Here's an old fence from a long time ago. I think, man, that thing's embedded in there. To explain things better to you guys, I'm basically exploring a hole right next to Bill's place that we haven't explored because we thought it was private land, but yeah, it turns out it's public in this particular spot. Where the Sasquatch are is private, just right next to it. I think I can sneak up into that spot that's private land where the Sasquatch are. Let's see what's going on. Crows are going nuts, guys. Top of this ridge look at this look at this two big mounds you probably can't tell from there dang it's hard to tell on the camera but yeah there's two big mounds right here next to one another on top of this high ridge and there's no roads no houses right next to here just deep forest look at that there's the other mound right there that big bright spot there see that see that mound that's kind of weird there's two mounds up here on the ridge guys oh there's a third one fourth one no that that might be a stump maybe big trees fell guys big trees fell in the past and left these mounds or they could be burial mounds who knows it's hard to say could it be from the Native Americans or the Sasquatch? What do you guys think? Man, the vocals traveled in this area. Yeah. No wonder they do so many calls from this spot sound just travels through this holler there's like a giant valley it's like multiple hollers but the sounds just travel straight down that way and that seems to be the direction that they're going they seem to be going east to west not always but most of the time There seems to be like a bed right here. It seems bigger than a white-tailed deer. I always find beds at my place, but this one seems more... It's bigger around. I don't know how to explain it to you guys. Right there. There's like a bed right there. I'm looking for hairs, and I'm not seeing white hairs like I typically do with white-tailed deer. And there's a rock right there. Yeah, the rock was moved at one point in time. Not seeing too many hairs. I'm definitely armed in case I come across a hog. They're out here, guys. Big, giant hogs. Hopefully I don't run into Hogzilla, like the one off Monster Quest. What are you saying? All right, I'm standing in the spot where they usually go off at, at nighttime. I gotta admit, even during the day, it has this spooky feeling to it. I don't know how to describe it. Could be something in here. I know I got the owls riled, or the crows riled up with, with the owl call, but they were, they were going off before I walked into the woods, so. They're really, hammering at something so there's something in here other than myself and yeah you best believe i'm carrying something i just 
just got to make sure I know how to find my way back. Because when I show you guys the amount of forest here on the drone, it's going to freak you guys out. bed I think this one is for sure a deer bed but you can see like the hairs in the bed there's white hairs in there so I think this is a white tail that other one looked pretty big could have been something else sitting there like a hog or a sasquatch I didn't see any hair in it but yeah this is where we think the juveniles are hanging out at and of course all the big ones move through here too but the juveniles seem to stay put back here and they call back and forth and then you can hear the bigger ones moving through the woods calling to each other. I'm just looking around for anything, anything unusual, anything that sticks out, anything that points towards Bigfoot. Anything cool really. I don't know what those mounds were up there, but it could have been something. I don't really want to mess with it. Look at that. Hmm. It's like some crystal. So right down here in this creek bottom, first time I came here, Steve was showing me what he thought was a track down there at the creek, and we were following it, and then we heard thump, like a loud thud. Check this out. See this big mound? I think it's storm damage, like a tree went down, the roots brought up all the dirt, and the trees have since rotted up. Pretty sure that's what's going on. And it leaves like a big hole in the ground too when the trees get knocked over. I don't want to jump in there because you guys know. All right, looking for any tracks on here. I saw like some type of indention, but it's just a hole. All right, yeah, we're in the right spot. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like a little drainage that goes that way. Looks like a pretty good spot. I'm not seeing nothing but trees. Just solid forest, guys. That's why the Sasquatch are here. But yeah, they're down in there. Not down in there right now, but you know what I mean. That's where they've been hanging out at. That's where they like to be. And I'm sitting here on this log, seeing if I can experience anything. Gonna sit here, see what happens, guys. It's hard to get comfortable on a log, but. Yeah, I'm thinking about coming back here. Thinking about coming back here and bringing the ghillie suit. If I sit here in this spot with the ghillie suit for a couple hours, I think I'll have some luck. But yeah, I'm gonna try to poke into these holes with this camera and see if I can pick out any feet movement, any strange shadows, anything.
Alright, I know you guys can't smell it through the camera, but it smells really weird right here. It smells like a cattle barn. Maybe there's like a buck living back in here. Okay, this is where they're at, guys. Spooky. Freaking out because I'm like in the middle of the Mark Twain National Forest. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm doing it. What the heck is that? What is that? What is that? What the heck? Oh my god. There's a piece of bread sitting on this stump and I'm in the middle of nowhere guys that's bread I don't know if that's pancake or cake or something oh my gosh what the heck is this doing sitting out here on this stump there's like bread what the heck in the middle of nowhere guys I'll show you guys on the drone What the heck is going on? There's a piece of bread sitting on a push down tree. <laughs> Can't wrap my mind around that. Um, okay. Don't smell too bad. What the heck? Yeah, let's try to figure that out. There's the bread. Who's eating bread out here? This is the water source, so they're hanging out by the water for sure. There's always water nearby. Oh my god, the bugs are horrible down here. Okay, we gotta make sure we go back up that ridge. If we don't, we're gonna get lost, okay? I don't wanna get lost. I'm panicking just even mentioning the thought of it. We're going into no man's land. Why am I shaking? Why am I freaked out? I don't know why guys, like... <sighs> My anxiety's like racing. But I can't let that take me over. If not, I'll get lost and be even more screwed. Okay. I think I know where I'm going. I literally walked in a straight line. There's the boundary marker. So I've been walking in a straight line. Cool. Most people walk in circles when they don't know where they're going. Whoa. Look at this damage. Look at this damage. Could be storm damage. See that? Huh. And then look at that. Maybe that tree fell and broke this one. I don't know. It's hard to say. Cool. It's really rocky down in here. There's a lot of rocks for some reason. Whoa. Holy crap. 
I found something. Yes. I told you. Oh my god. Oh. Told you. Yes. Oh my god. There was a baby deer sleeping. There was a baby deer sleeping underneath that structure. I thought it was a Sasquatch, guys. Okay, we found the structures. Oh my gosh, if a deer, if a deer freaked me out that bad. It was a little baby deer, spotted deer. Holy crap, look at this structure. Yes, yes, yes. Look at this. Most skeptics, most people are gonna say, no, it's not. Look at that, guys. Look at that, that is beautiful. Look at that. And if my calculations are correct, I told you guys they're here. There's gonna be more structures. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Look how all that's tied in. Whoa. This is like an ax with a bunch of arches. Cool. Look at that. Wow. You guys see that? This GoPro is not the best. I'm gonna get turned around just looking at these structures. Look at that. Yes, look at that arch. Look, multiple arches. There's one, two, three, and then it all ties into the X up there at the top. Okay, that wasn't wind damage over there. Something came in here and destroyed everything. I'm trying to document this the best I can but I'm kind of shaky. Sorry guys. Yeah, look at that. Why am I shaking so bad? Okay, cool. There should be more structures around this one. I gotta be super careful. Like, super careful. Yes. Yes. Look at it from this side, guys. That is undeniably a Sasquatch structure. Wow, and there was a baby deer bedded right underneath that. Look at that. See, there's that X that I was telling you guys about and everything's like weaved into it. Cool. Yeah, this is totally where they're at. I'm not messing around this time. I told you guys. I'm gonna find something. Oh, yeah. There's like a den over here, guys. Maybe it's deadfall. Maybe, maybe it's deadfall. Kind of looks like a little shelter. Look at all these rocks. Look at these rocks. See, there's the structure. Structure's still over there. Check underneath these rocks. Have they been moved? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. That's kind of weird. What's up with that? That looks shredded. And it's on top of that big limb that fell. See? And look at that. See? Look at that. See how that limb is hooked into this little shelter. Oh my gosh. If a baby deer will bed in there and it's made by Sasquatch, you best believe a juvenile is probably getting in there. Look at this. That's a deadfall, probably. 
that looks like it was bent over. Right, that's the boundary marker. I don't think I'm safe being in here. I really don't. I do not feel safe whatsoever. I'm not trying to be dr dramatic, but maybe because I'm not used to this spot. Something's not right. Like, I got this feeling everything got quiet, like everything got dead quiet. Okay, see that boundary marker? Look at that, see how it's bent? Tips broke off, look at that. There's like a little X. Check that out. Check that out. Look at that. Maybe it's deadfall. What do you guys think? I don't know. Look, that one's bent over the other way. Could be deadfall guys, but there's structures in here. Sasquatch structures are deadfall. They push over trees, what do you call that? That's dead trees, they fell. It's just a matter if the wind made it or a Sasquatch. What's up, buddy? Say hi to the camera. Say what's up. Yeah. Yeah, see, look at that arch. See that? Okay. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of unusual there try and document as much as I can. There's definitely something in here. It's just so quiet back here. I'm not gonna lie, it's so quiet that it spooks me out really bad. Trail. They're like side skirts. This hill. Probably deer though, because Sasquatch don't leave trails. Maybe tracks, but not trails. Could be possible though. People say they do leave trails. <laughs> All right, I think I've gone far enough. Um, Just my heartbeat is like racing and um, I'm getting really hot. It's almost 100 degrees, so maybe I could be experiencing the, the first stages of um, heat stroke. Sorry, it's like hard for me to think of what I'm even gonna say. That's kind of unusual. Oh wow, my camera's tripping out, guys. Camera's tripping out. This, the back screen just went like black and white. Okay, okay. Not saying it's Bigfoot, but you never know. Look at that, broken, broken. Man, something, something just doesn't feel right back here. Yeah. I can still hear Bill's grandkids, so that's good. I'm almost out of water and I gotta go back like a mile. All right, I'm gonna get to the top of this hill right here. I'm almost there. I'm gonna turn around and go back. See, that's been moved. That's been moved. That's been moved. Could be hogs.
Okay, something's not right. My heart's like beating like crazy. I'm going back. Let's go back. All right. Pretty deep. Um, the red exclamation marks, that's where I've heard the vocals in the past. So that's where I've estimated kind of where they've been. But yeah, I'm going to walk back. I think I know where I'm at, maybe. I don't want to walk that way to see if there's a trail because I don't want to get lost. But at the same time, if there's a trail, it might make things easier. Okay. I think I know exactly where I'm at. All right, let's head back to the cabin. Man, that's a scary feeling, man. I don't want to get lost out here. Cool. There's always damage across the road. Kind of unusual. All right, that old structure that I showed you guys before. It's like something smashed it to pieces or it broke apart. But look at the damage. This branch going across the road, I think is them like, because if you're walking, crunch. I hear that. That's what I think, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's not. All right. Hopefully they follow me out of here. That was kind of my theory before that whenever we explored the first time I was out here, Maybe we ran into one, because like I said, we heard that thud down there in that creek. Maybe we ran into one, and they followed us back to the cabin to see what the heck we were up to. But yeah, I'm super pumped that I found that Sasquatch structure down there. I don't know how much I walked, but I walked a good ways. And I'm pretty happy I found this, this road, because I didn't want to walk all the way up that hill that I went down in the beginning. Yes, yes. This adds so much more to the research, not just because I found a structure, but because my suspicions were true. I knew that if I went down there and explored, I'd find something. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is cool. I really like being out here by myself, honestly. I like being out here with the guys, but the serenity and peace of being on your own is something a person has to master. You can't just be on your own and be happy. It's something that a person has to get used to and become comfortable with. And I think it's a good way to find yourself. If you're ever going through a dark time Maybe it's a good thing that you're, you're alone for the moment because you're allowed to find yourself from deep within and, you know, fix the little things that are going wrong in your life so that way you can improve and better yourself. Kind of looks like something. There's like an impression right there. The last time I walked back out of this forest, I thought I heard a whistle. I mean, it was pretty clear and distinct, but I'm not sure. It was like right by the cemetery. They say you should never whistle in the forest because it calls in evil spirits. According to the Native Americans in Canada. I heard it on, I think, Hammerson Peters' channel which there's a lot of good information there. If you guys can check out Hammerson Peters, I think that's what it's called. I like to sit down at nighttime and listen to his channel. I like to watch 
Mountain Beast Mysteries, listen to Dixie Cryptid, Sasquatch Chronicles. I like everyone really. How to Hunt, that's a cool channel. Let's see what we got here. Barbecued, pulled chicken, and mashed potatoes. All right, you gotta ask me what I found. What'd you find? Okay, so I walked bordering the Mark Twain Mm -hmm. And it's just this giant ridge that goes all the way into the Mark Twain. And um, I've marked all these points on the map the last time, I, the last couple times I was out here where I heard the Sasquatch. I'm like guessing, okay, they're right here. And I've put some markers out there. So that's where I was going. And when me and Steve heard that loud thump, boom, that's the direction I went to. I got right in that area. <clears throat> and then I kept going. And I got to this log, and um, you're not gonna believe this. It's kind of weird. There's a big log that goes across the creek, and I was walking across that log. There's a piece of bread sitting on that log. Like way, I mean way out there, in the middle of nowhere, a piece of bread. Like, why would there be a piece of bread on a What if they stole somebody's that's the only thing I can Loaf think of, bread. because when we're sitting by that fire, you hear tink, tink, like something's going through the trash or something, like they're definitely coming up around the house. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've had footprints behind my truck. Yeah, but that's not the main thing I found. I started going further and further and further, and then I found this giant X, and all these um, saplings arched into it, and Where's there's this at? way out there, like um, if you follow that creek, just keep following that creek. It'll it'll take you to it. Um, I marked it on the map. I figured that's where they were at. <clears throat> yeah. Did, well, right where we're hearing way? them. Right where we're hearing them. No, like that way. Right through there. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where we hear the majority of them. Yeah. Man. Well, I, this is the strange part. I got this really weird feeling, like a strange feeling, and like it got so quiet back there. Yeah. It did creep me out, but you know like when you shoot a gun or like there's a loud explosion like how your ears are ringing and like your Your audio is like inside your head almost like that. It I had that same feeling like yeah. Like something weird was going on But I started walking further the GoPro was tripping out like the back screen was like turning white and black like static and I don't know just my heart was like racing. I'm like man. It's not that hot. I'm in the shade like I'm walking uphill, but um, it's not that hot and my heart's just racing. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna stop. I'm just stop because I only got a little bit of water left. And I'm sitting there and my heart's just doo -doo -doo -doo. like, I can hear it in my head, just my heart beating. So I'm like, all right, something's not right. So I went all the way on top of this hill. It got even creepier. And then I cut up that way. I'm like, there's gotta be a logging road because my heart's just beating like crazy. And I kept walking that way and I hooked onto that logging road where we found those structures and I'm like, all right, the whole way back, I felt fine. Didn't feel tired or nothing, but when I was there, like when I had that quiet feeling where you, yeah, yeah you can hear a pin drop, like my heart was just... I bet you are being messed with. I don't know, but it, it was right when I passed that X structure, like I didn't feel right. I don't know how to explain it, like I thought I was going to have a heat stroke. I'm like, there's no way. In there, man. I, think they live, I think they live back off over here. That's the direction I was going. Yeah, I think that's where they live at. Yeah, but I literally, like, I wasn't even looking at the boundary markers. I walked a straight, straight line. Because when I got down there by the X, I looked over and there's a Mark Twain marker, yellow marker, in the really? middle of the woods. Yeah. So I'm like, dang, good thing I didn't get lost. Because a lot of people, they make a big circle and they get lost. <laughs> the Sasquatch could be watching us right now and we would have no idea. They typically like to hang out in pine forest areas along waterways. There is a lot of granite rock in this area and a lot of places to hide. There's been many Bigfoot reports 
reported in the past from this particular county and area. I question if they are here at the moment, but no one could possibly really know that. If they are out there, they're watching us at all times and waiting for the right time to come out. Now's the time they they like to come out. Yeah. But will they? I agree they? totally. Will they though? Those owls didn't sound too far off either. What owl? You heard those owls down there, right? They were hooting down that way. No, I didn't even hear them. Yeah, they were hooting. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And you were hearing that chatter up there, those people. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. It could have been something because it was behind the cemetery. Yeah. I think that's my favorite thermal setting though, the black hot. It looks better than that red and orange or the blue and orange. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of like military style thermal. The flur stuff. Cheap flur sucks, but like military and law enforcement flur. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. a whole different ball game. They won't sell us that stuff. They make it. Well, they will if you're rich, but they make it so expensive, so oh, the yeah. average man can't afford this yep, kind of gear. That's right. I heard something. I came out with a good Yeah, there is like a light in there. Is it still there? Yeah, it's, yeah, I, it, it's got the tree line lit up. Maybe it's the moon. Oh no, there's no houses back the there, guys. No, there's no houses. Over there. there ain't no. To your right. Oh, let's go. That's where we're going in at. Fuck that, right? Oh, it looks. Yeah, it looks kind of lit up. Seeing some strange lights. I hear music or people. What do you guys see? That 
how that tree wings lit up. Yeah, that's strange. I mean, it could just be the horizon. Yeah, I don't see anything on the thermal. It could be, but the sun, yeah. Well, maybe the full moon is like lighting up something. What do you think we should do? Walk down further? Go back to the fire? I think we should run. Run? <laughs> There's something around here, for sure, always. You know what? what's impressive? Is you hear all these stories, and then you go out here. Like, personally, we've seen that walk, you know, that big John boat looking mass walk through the woods. Mm -hmm. It never made a noise. Really? Like, mm -hmm. if that had been me trying to sneak through there, dude, I'd have made all kinds of racket, especially yeah. at nighttime. It makes you think they're paranormal, but sometimes animals themselves, big animals, can be quiet too, so it's hard to say. Okay, I've seen bobcats when I'm hunting, but mm -hmm. never notice them until I see them. Never heard them coming. Right. So, a bigger animal, I could see getting around pretty, pretty quiet. Yeah. Didn't get on your nose. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course. You gotta, you gotta bat in the cave. Okay. <clears throat> la 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 la. Oh, yeah. Pretty loud. The sound traveled all the way down through the hollers. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Now I'm freaked out. Yeah. Everything started popping after that. The last time I'd done that out here, we got two. I did it twice. Is what I'm saying. I did it twice. Straight up, Matt Moneymaker, Ohio house, you know, oh, really? yeah. but you can't hear it on my video. Hmm. You hear the highway, but you cannot hear it on the video. Yeah. It's kind of spooky out here, guys. Break out that death whistle. Don't you it. came from this direction. Really? Where at? What direction? So Josh's is over here. Uh -huh. and we were behind Josh's. Well, maybe a little further to the right, but it came from this direction. Oh, okay. Yeah, you said you guys have explored around here before, so. Sasquatch, know who you guys are? Could be the same Sasquatch. I mean, I've said it's probably separate clans, but it could be the same one. Following you guys around. Scared the side by side guys off. Or they're coming this way to see what the hell it was. What in the fuck was that? If they got guns, that's not good. They're kind of nice. I'm probably a better shot. <laughs> right. I always tell people, dude, I'll hurt you from at least 1200 yards away. Right. I hear noises, but it's more like on the other side of, um... Didn't look so hot earlier today, but now... Darn near looks like video. You ever tried to use it in the snow yet? No. It didn't waste your time. Really? <laughs> the thermal? Yeah, it took mine out. Mine's water resistant now. I was like, eh, we got that snow that coming in real thick. That seems a little unusual right there. Could have fell once again, but the thing's weaved in there.
All right, it's the next day. I'm back out here on the trail. I saw something black fall out of the tree, and I heard thump, thump, thump. And then it was gone. I don't know what it was. I heard it move down that hauler. The same area I looked through yesterday where I found the structure. It sounded a lot bigger than a squirrel. But yeah, I'm going to look around some more, see if I can find any, any better sign than yesterday. Or I should say more sign. I'm going to look around to see if I can find more sign. And maybe I can run into the clan, hopefully, if I'm lucky. Totally going to have to look out for snakes. We got a black snake right here. Pretty sure they're harmless, but yeah, I don't like it. Okay. Go around them. I'm finding a lot of tree breaks similar to this one, and a lot of them are in clusters along trails and roads. Could be natural guys, but I'm thinking it could be them just breaking stuff. Like you can see all the limbs off that cedar. They've all been popped off and that tree behind it. Most of the limbs have been broken off. I apologize if you guys can't see too well on the GoPro. It's just hard to carry the big cameras out here on the go without having somebody to film for me. Yeah, it's supposed to be about 88 degrees today. It's feeling like it's hotter than yesterday and it was in the 90s yesterday. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, it's already miserable. I'm heading. I'm just going to continue heading down this forested road. And I'm going to look for more logging roads. And see if I can find any more structures and sign. Um, maybe I'll run into a booger or two out here. You never know. This is the way to do it though. By yourself. Isolated alone walking on roads and trails being relatively quiet it's the only way guys here we have some more breaks and what i believe that is is they're leaving markers and they're traveling through the area pretty much making huge circles around but as they travel through the area they break these trees to indicate to the rest of the group where they went, where they're at, and their directional markers that are associated to a language used for communication. But it seems like it's paralleling this forested road. Could be natural though. Seems like there's a road right here. Looks good enough to me. We got another stick poker right here in the middle of the road. I mean, it's possible that limb fell from all the way up there and jabbed into the ground. But you never know. I think we found something. Check this out. There's like some black hair in the middle of this trail. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know what that is. It's black hair. It could be a hog. It could be from a bear. Or maybe a Sasquatch. 
Should I collect some? Yeah, let's collect some hair. I'm so far back here, it's not even funny. I don't know if I should keep walking further or turn back around. I'm not seeing the same amount of structures as I did by Bill's place, but at the same time, we are remote. I get a really eerie feeling back here, just like I did yesterday in that other spot. Except today, I'm way farther out, way, way farther out. To give you guys a better reference, that's where I'm at right now. Well, I didn't find anything out there. Like I said, it seemed like there was more sign around Bill's cabin. Thank <laughs> you.